The content on this channel is for educational and informational purposes only. Nothing we say or do should be considered advice. No tax, legal, accounting, investment, or any other kind of advice. Anything you invest in is at your own risk. Do your own research and consult with professionals. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bytes Digital. If you're new around here, thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to be covering and breaking down what is going on with the Solana chain exploit. There has been a lot of information breaking and this is an evolving story. And at the time of recording, it seems that on-chain metrics are revealing that the exploited wallets have at least stopped being exploited. Uh, and all the funds from said exploited wallets, which is about 10,000, have been officially drained of all their tokens. If you're not familiar with Solana, Solana is a top 10 market cap chain with the sole token, its native token being listed at number nine right now with approximately $13.9 billion worth of a market cap. Solana has been a bustling environment for NFT growth uh, with meteoric rise of the minting rates of new NFT projects. At 9.39 p.m. August 2nd, the Solana status Twitter officially reported about the troubles. Prior to this, several people on Twitter were reporting uh, their wallets being drained or at least seeing some heavy on-chain activity of some major transactions going through and sending tokens to specific select addresses. At approximately 5 a.m. UTC, the Solana team identified about 8,000 wallets that were actually compromised and had all their tokens drained. On-chain metrics are going to reveal a much bigger story. Special thanks to Hawk from the Flipside Analyst community for de developing this dashboard and helping me clue in on what's actually happening on the Solana chain. At approximately 2200 on August 2nd, several wallets were identified to be sending all their tokens. The drain had officially begun, where these wallets were sending their tokens to select four addresses often identified to be the hacker. Uh, and over the next several hours, these wallets would continue to be drained and new wallets would be getting drained as well. Between the period of August 2nd at 2200 hours to August 3rd at 600 hours UTC, there were 10,000 wallets effectively drained due to this heavy exploit. Approximately 5.36 million US dollars were drained and over 18,000 transactions were carried out in order to send all the tokens over to the hackers' wallets. If you dig in a little bit deeper about the distribution of wallets that were compromised, it becomes glaringly obvious that some major whales contribute to the largest amount of volume that was actually compromised. More than 53% of the affected wallets lost less than 100 US dollars. Even more insightful, approximately 93% of the affected wallets lost less than $1,000 worth of tokens. If you dig into the wallets a little bit deeper, you'll discover that even the top three wallets contributed to 50% of the total 5.36 million US dollars that were effectively drained from this wallet exploit. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the news that is going on and what has been identified thus far. As of right now, there hasn't been an official confirmation about what has occurred and why it has happened. But we're going to leave several threads into the description of the video, organized based off of the notoriety of the person or what source they're coming from. But please feel free to refer to these Twitter threads for your own research so that you can develop a better understanding of what's going on here. First up is to understand who is under fire the most for this. It is easy to consider this as a Solana blockchain hack. However, the story is much more complex and involves the actual supply chain of the development of the software that interacts with the blockchain. Slope Finance is one of those apps that develops a essentially an aggregating platform to where users from a mobile device can interact with dApps, have multiple wallets housed, and actually have a much more smoother experience with interacting with the blockchain. So far, we haven't heard any official word as to what was the cause of this wallet exploit. All we know are the actual numbers of the users that have been affected, and that could continue developing as well. So far, Slope Finance has released a community letter to advise the community what to do with their wallets. If you have interacted with Slope Finance, the Slope team has encouraged everyone, regardless if you're just new or if you made your wallet a month ago and you haven't even been part of this attack. If you have any form of wallet that you've imported to Slope, please consider opening up a new, unique seed phrase wallet. All hot wallets that have interacted with Slope 
could be susceptible to a further attack. And so Finance advises everyone to open up a new fresh wallet. A cohort of wallets has been confirmed to be one of those that was under this batch of exploit. However, the true cause hasn't been identified, but the Slope team seems to be rather close to defining that. Regardless of the fact that Slope hasn't confirmed the cause of this, there has been rampant speculation throughout the entire crypto space, with several Twitter threads keeping everyone up to date. However, those are not official sources coming from Slope or the Solana Foundation, so do, do tread lightly when you look at those Twitter threads. Some of the best ones that I've come across will be in the description of this video. It is believed, and according to the founder of one of the co-founders of Solana, that this was a iOS an Android supply chain hack with the actual devices that Slope has created. And so with anyone that has interacted with the Slope Android or Slope iOS platform, if you've imported a wallet into it, it seems that somewhere along the line of the development of the app itself, some malicious code was implemented to where they were gathering, potentially gathering some seed phrases for the wallets that were associated. Remember, none of this is confirmed. This is a still developing story. That is all the information that I have been able to collect and decipher and really kind of clue together what is going on with this wallet exploit. I hope everyone is staying safe out there, but regardless, luckily today I was able to interview one of the Flipside analysts and protocol advocate who primarily focuses on Solana and kind of pick his brain on what is going on and in what he believes a user should do in case anything is happening. Everyone is right now is aware about what's going on with Solana, and there's just been rampant speculation. And today, I'm lucky and fortunate enough to have Michael from the Flipside team, uh, who is a dedicated protocol advocate and data analyst with the Flipside team. Uh, and he's basically in charge of being in, in the know of what's all going on in the Solana ecosystem. Uh, so thank you so much, Michael, for coming on. How are you doing today? What are the news? What kind of things are you noticing is going on in the Solana world? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Obviously, it's a bit of a humbling and sobering time um, where, unfortunately, um, a good number of uh, wallets from the community were were drained yesterday. Um, and everyone right now is just trying to figure out what's happening. Um, at the moment, it seems like the best guess, um, you know, it's still a bit speculative, is that it is some sort of uh, like uh, supply chain attack um, from a third party. So that's just something to emphasize at the beginning is I wouldn't quite call it a Solana hack, but it's um, likely um, some sort of software or accounts, um, you know, built off Solana or using, um, you know, a browser extension wallets or things of that nature that are causing um, the uh, this hack rather than um, there being a flaw in, say, the Solana uh, code itself. Um, so at the moment, we're just all trying to figure out what's happening and um, hoping that we can resolve this issue so that um, it won't continue and, um, you know, we can try and rectify those that have been, um, you know, unfortunately drained from this attack. So in, 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 the, in the general temperature of, of the climate, I've seen a lot of people just claiming that this is the supply chain hack. What, what, could you unpack that a little bit so uh, a viewer at home can kind of understand how there is a separation here? Um, because like everywhere I see, everyone's claiming that this is basically a Solana chain hack. Like the blockchain has been compromised and the Solana devs can really do something here to stop it. Um, but what, what is actually going on on that supply chain front? Yeah, so pretty much what that means is that um, it's likely that at some point um, the seed phrase um, and private keys of, um, you know, these hot wallets, so wallets that are um, being actively used through like a browser extension or through your mobile um, were um, exposed um, through an outside party that um, is just kind of going along um, to help the um, entire user experience. Um, but there is nothing on the Solana side that would be releasing said information. It would be coming from, um, you know, some sort of software that uh, we're currently trying to investigate on what that exactly was. So if I'm understanding correctly, uh, right now, um, the, the current belief is that th that's 
basically wallet providers or some form of wallet infrastructure has been compromised with potential seed phrases that are being accessed uh, just kind of uh, remotely? Um, it's a bit, I think of a stretch to say that. Um, it's kind of unclear on what the actual cause of this is. I think it's more likely that um, some sort of third party that is um, you know, using, say, it seems like it's only been phantom wallets and predominantly actually slope wallets um, via mobile. I have seen this like kind of speculation about Android and iOS wallets being like a compromised vector. What are your thoughts on that? And what's like the current insights? Yeah, so I definitely would um, definitely like follow this. This is uh, Anatoly, who is the founder of Solana. So um you know, definitely a good account to be following as we're trying to unpack this, um, you know, this hack and really just everything that's going on with Solana. He's pretty much the go-to source. Um, mm -hmm. And I, it feels like um, what likely happened is in um, some sort of mobile um, verification, there's probably some third party um, source through that, that um, has been compromised. Um, what's been kind of interesting is some of these wallets that were being um, drained actually haven't even been active for like months on end. Um, so it feels like this has been something that was, um, you know, obtained over time. Um, and, um, you know, yesterday was the time to, um, you know, finally kind of attack and um it, you know start draining those wallets that um you know unfortunately likely didn't do anything that wrong besides just using a hot wallet which um you know i think we can go over some best practices in terms of um you know safety around your assets but um you know just the reality is that um likely these wallets were just um, you know, using, um, you know, the mobile platform. And um, unfortunately, their private keys were then um, shared to this hacker. So I wanted to dig a little bit deeper on that portion about what users can do right now in the moment. Uh, what what suggestions do you have for someone who is interacting with the Solana blockchain, or even if they're outside of Solana, should people on Ethereum be worried right now, or even on the Phantom ecosystem? So if you if you could just give a little bit of insights on how an actual crypto user can guide and navigate the situation that would be greatly appreciated yeah so i think this actually should apply to everyone obviously this is um being emphasized on solana right now but as we kind of just discussed it's likely not you know it's, it's because it's a solana issue it's the wallets that are um you know that use solana that um where the issues have kind of come from um and that could happen to anyone so I think, you know, some good pra best practices, especially if say you're on Solana right now, if you do have a ledger wallet, a hardware wallet, um, send your assets there. Uh, so far, no hardware wallets have been affected. It's only been um, these hot wallets. Um, so on Slope and Phantom that have, um, you know, had this hack. So um, if you're using a hardware wallet, uh, you're gonna be, um, you know, having a, a little bit more peace of mind. Um, if you don't have uh, the ability to uh, secure a ledger wallet quickly, uh, say you don't have one right now and you're gonna order one, I would um, create a new wallet on Solana. Um, right now, it seems like Soulflare wallet has not been affected. So I personally would actually create a Soulflare wallet. Um, and the good news is sending, um, assets from you know one wallet to another is quite cheap on solana so i would create a new wallet and um you know send your assets from a hot wallet that you've already been using to this new wallet uh just so you know you're you're fresh and you feel a little bit better about um your private keys or you know have not been exposed yet um and then and one other thing that you can do um, which it doesn't seem like this is the reason for the hack, but it's just generally good practice, is you can uh, revoke the um, the access to um, your wallet from different apps. So if you actually go on to, say, your Phantom wallet and into your settings, 
uh, you can um, actually revoke um, pretty much access from different um, applications just to make sure that those applications aren't, you know, somehow compromised and uh, leading to this hack. There's also this um, these set of tools by um, it's called an NFT project called the Famous Fox Federation, and they have a wallet um, application revoker where they will uh, revoke all applications from your wallet. So these are just all best practices that you can do uh, specifically on Solana, but you should be doing generally that should help protect your assets. Uh, to all the viewers at home, all those suggestions that he has uh, has mentioned in this video will be in the description of the video, but please remember that none of this is going to be financial or investment advice. We're just trying to provide you as much information as 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 early as possible uh, to make sure that you guys are protected and armed with all the information you can to make an educated decision. Uh, so be sure to check out these Twitter threads, go cut through the noise, cut through all the information you're seeing. Uh, right now, it's kind of tough to be able to see everything that is going on because there's a lot of claims going out there. Uh, so it's important to be able to discern what's true and what's not. Uh, and that judgment call can only be made by you. Uh, so thank you so much, Michael, for coming on to the show. I really appreciate you. I hope that our viewers and a lot of everyone else out there can actually navigate these troubling times uh, in the market. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope that today's video has given you a little bit of more clarity on the Solana situation, and I hope that you have been safe out there. I'm really sorry if you've been impacted. This is a terrible event. Uh, it's just a reminder to everyone that hot wallets are a danger. Uh, hot wallets being connected or meaning any wallet that is connected to the internet is of compromised opportunity. And if a uh, any hacker has access to that seed phrase, either remotely or if you gave it up in some form or fashion, they can access your funds and completely drain it. And there is nothing that the blockchain can really do about it. Uh, and these are just inherent risks when it comes to interacting to DeFi. Uh, and it's really unfortunate to see this happening and affecting uh, quite a bit of small smaller users, uh, which are going to be the next generation of investors in NFTs or perhaps even DeFi in general. Uh, so this is an important reminder to everyone to consider hardware storage, no, nothing to use with hot wallets. Please consider moving high amounts of volume carefully and remember to practice some safety while using DeFi. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an incredible day. Take care and be safe.